Yes. Remember in school when, like, your teacher would tell you, like, hey, you got a quiz coming up soon. I'm, I'm just preparing you, so make sure that you're paying attention to your book and everything. And then the, then the quiz comes, and you're like, oh, man, I totally forgot that was happening. Sure. I feel like Raw did, I feel like they did the same thing with Payback. Like, they forgot it was happening. And they're like, oh, we need to do all this stuff. And then, oh, man, that, that, I don't. Yeah, no, it was just the poorly timed Superstar shakeup. Yeah. They had all these great ideas, and they're like, yeah, shit, now what do we do? Um, this was the go-home raw to payback. It wasn't bad. No, it was, it was just weird. It, it, it just fell like one notch short of being good. Y yes. It was, it was a decent raw. It, was, it definitely, definitely wasn't bad. Because, I mean, let's be real, highlight, Roman Reigns wasn't on. If you don't count video you know, packages. I, I will appreciate the fact that they kept Roman Reigns off of TV another week to sell this injury. Yeah. Uh, I thought for sure he was going to be back tonight. Only to be slightly like dampened by the fact that Titus O'Neil was on. Yeah, well. But let's get into what happened. Uh, so we had the highlight Miz Asylum. That was the thing. That's what we opened the show with. It was the highlight reel that became Miz TV, that became... The Ambrose Asylum, that of course, whenever Dean Ambrose and the Miz are in the ring... I never, thought it was the Miz Bros reel, but... That's, that's what we're going to get next week. Uh, uh, this was this was probably the best segment of the night. I, I can't wait for Amlight TV. That actually sounds like a thing. Uh, this was so much fun. The, just a ridiculous opening segment that ended up setting up the main event, which was... Uh, Miz, like, burst into Kurt's, uh, office. He's like, hey, are you gonna let stuff like that happen? You shouldn't. Stop it. Don't let that happen. And Kurt's basically like, you got a problem? Man up, bitch. Yeah. Fight so, Dean Ambrose and Chris Jericho. Hope you can find a partner, yeah. wuss. So Miz spent the entire night looking for a partner. Cesaro said no. Uh, Heath Slater and Curtis Axel said no. Yeah. There was a lot of a lot of people said no. Then he got a note. Yeah, and then apparently he had a super a, awesome he, tag team partner lined up. Yeah, uh, Matt Hardy defeated Sheamus. Uh, interesting to see Matt in singles action on WWE again. Interesting is a one way to put it. He he moves funny. It's weird. He's. Yeah? He's old and broken. Uh, he's broken, all right. <laughs> it's still a decent match, though. Uh, ended up beating Shams with a twist of fate after there was some pushing and shoving and an argument between uh, Cesaro and Jeff on the outside. Yep. Uh, Shams got distracted. And then we had like the awkward like sportsman-like handshake at the end where... Sheamus? Cesaro, yeah, Cesaro was getting all up in Jeff and Matt's faces. Why is Sheamus the voice of reason in this situation? <laughs> because, well, you know, it's a th it's a thing. If two people spend enough time around each other, they're gonna start adapting each other's personality traits. That's fair. Now that Cesaro and Sheamus actually like each other, they're a little bit a little bit of Sheamus's temper is rubbing off on Cesaro, and a little bit of Cesaro's. Um, Level-headedness. Yeah, is rubbing off on Sheamus. I guess the benefit of the team, I guess. Yeah. Uh, speaking of teams, we had uh, Austin Aries and Jack Gallagher defeat Neville and TJ Perkins. This was a fun match. It was. I, I appreciated the chemistry on either side of this tag team match. Aries with that fucking low-pay double clothesline on Perkins and Neville. Sounded like he punched one of them in the, one of them in the face. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Gallagher ended up... Uh, T they ended up taking Neville out, and he caught a kick from Perkins, spun around, he got a forearm, and then a discus five arm, uh, both from Aries, uh, and Perkins lost the match for his yeah, team. Yeah, that was the moment where like I saw the ending happening, and I'm like, oh, this is how it's going to happen, and then it happened sort of the way I thought it was going to happen, but like with an extra step in the middle, and I was like, uh, you know, they, they missed an opportunity to make it look even cooler. Yeah. Because it should have just been spun directly right into the discus five arm, I think. I think it would have been great if, if like with the leg, 
if Gallagher would have dropped it and hit that headbutt and have him turn around right into the discus five arm. Yeah. That's how you do that. Yeah, the, that other forearm in between just seemed totally yeah. unnecessary. Well, Austin Aries. He's the king of extra unnecessary movements. <laughs> That's what he does. Uh, then we had the dumpster had match. Packages. The dumpster match between Kalisto and Braun Strowman. This went exactly the way I thought it would until the end. Y yeah. Because I, I knew it was going to be Braun Strowman just beating the fuck out of Kalisto. But Kalisto has that fighting spirit. Which just looks like a regular grown man killing a 10 year old boy. Yeah. In a Halloween don't, costume. Don't kill a 10-year-old boy in a Halloween costume. Unless it's Michael Myers. Then kill that fucker because he'll grow up and he'll just ruin your life. Uh, but, you know, Kalisto's fighting back and, you know, Braun, they, they keep having those moments where they're almost in the dumpster and then Braun's on the outside and I'm thinking, okay, here it goes. It's going to be like a backdrop into the dumpster or he's going to catch him and just drop him. And then Kalisto drop kicks his legs, and he goes into the dumpster. Yeah, Braun just kind of falls into the dumpster, not like... He lands on his feet, so immediately you're just like, oh. And Braun just kind of looks down and looks back, and he's like, now, now I'm actually pissed. Yeah, Kalisto wins, and then he died. Because Braun fucked his world up. Yeah. Uh, just... It was, it was a bad day to be Kalisto, even though you won. Yeah, he battered was it, him. Was it really a victory? <laughs> he turned Kalisto into a human yo-yo. Yes, he did. Uh, then he just sort of haphazardly tossed him into the dumpster. Rolled the dumpster up the ramp. Mm -hmm. Which uh, was impressive. Uh, secured the uh, dumpster lid... With a uh, come along, tie down. And then looked like he was going to walk away. Yeah, he looked like he was going to... For a minute there, and I, th I was going to like totally pop if he was going to troll the crowd like that. Like he, was, he, he strapped the lid down, and then he walked over to the edge of the stage and looked down. And then started walking to the yeah. back like he was going to like take off. That would have been great. And then he uh, just shoved it off. Yeah. You know... It, it, the effect is a little bit ruined when the dumpster turned over on its side is taller than the stage. Yeah, the stage is only like a foot and a half, maybe two feet tall now. So it's not nearly as impressive as like the five and a half, six foot tall stage that they used to have. Yeah. So. Uh, you know... When that regular sized dumpster with two grown men disappear into it, fell all the way off the stage like 15 years ago. Uh, Outlaws versus seven, man. Uh, actually, 17 years ago. It was WWE's first dumpster match in 17 years. Yeah. And we, we watched that one. Yeah. We were watching that in wrestling when that match was relevant. Yeah. We were old. Outlaws versus Chainsaw Charlie and Mankind. Or was it Cactus, Cactus Jack? Jack. Yeah. Kalisto got taken to the hospital. Jack is cack. And, no. and Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman video packages for, for the rest days. of the night. Let's not do that. That was there was a big chunk of raw that was taken out because we need to know the history between Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. Yeah. Even though they've been wrestling each other for the last like four months. And don't forget to repeatedly plug over and over again the exclusive Roman Reigns interview on WWE.com. Bray also hyped the House of Horrors match, which apparently is going to be... It's going to start somewhere and then end in the arena. So essentially, wherever, whatever city they're going to, where what is... Uh, they're, they're in San Jose. San, oh, God. Uh, well, I, I mean, it's, this could turn out okay. in favor because California is going to be probably one of the, like, the best special effects places you can go well, to. Well, here, here's the thing. We were there. The building they're going to be in, we went to Raw there. Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't do a whole lot of exploring in that area except for our walks to and from the building itself. Yeah. Are they going to build something? Absolutely. They're in California. They're going to hire probably the cheapest crew they can get to build a, uh, 
you know, one of those $15 haunted house, house you know, $15 admission into the haunted house thing. Okay. They're going to build one of those, and they're going to wrestle in it, and hopefully not knock any of the walls down. And, uh, all of a sudden they're just going to, you know, pop out the curtain. My no, my honest, uh, honest to goodness thought on this is they're gonna pre-record everything that happens before yes they arrive to the arena probably uh, very probably sometime be na between now and the pay per view and then they're just gonna have to get in their dirty clothes yeah again and uh, reemerge out of the curtain at a perfectly timed segment. I can believe that. And I'm fine with that, as long as it looks good. You know, what What they need to do is they need to have that one trippy mindfuck moment, though. Because we all know, sort of, like, sort of know what gorilla position looks like now. Yeah. They build that cool little office room up next to the ramp that yeah. has, like, the TVs. Yeah, yeah you, got the, you got the WWE logo. Yeah. And that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So we all kind of know what it looks like. Uh, if you didn't, you know, like the one time we've seen it super recently was Shane walking through it when he challenged AJ for the Mania match. Or or AJ freaking out after he lost the match. Yeah. Uh, so, we know that that's there, that exists. Yeah, that's it's not a secret anymore. We need to have a mindfuck moment, though, where, like, Bray or Randy throws the other one, like, through, like, a sheet or a curtain in the House of Horrors area, and then they go flying out the like the curtain in the arena, like it teleported them to the arena. That would be weird. I'm just saying. I might be okay with it. It would be weird. But at this point, it, it's better than 90% of the shitty ideas that are probably going to happen in this match. Please don't let it suck. Please don't let it suck that bad. Because I'm putting $5 down right now that it's not going to be good. Well, I, I have hope because I like Bray. And There's going to be darkness and fog and sheeple and fire and snakes and pitchforks and... Grab your torch and pitchforks. Lightning and spiders and fire. Did I already say fire? I already said fire. Let's move on. Okay. Uh, Dana Brooke defeated Alicia Fox. Fast match. Uh, and then Dana got a weird, awkward hug from Emma. I'd like to get a weird, awkward hug from Emma. You would like to get any type of hug from Emma. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, the strangest six-man tag match, which was originally supposed to be Enzo and Cass teaming with Seth Rollins. A.K.A. Seth Rollins wearing ankle weights. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It was not a six-man tag match. It was five men and a butt nugget. Yeah. Uh, taking on Samoa Joe and the club. But, as Enzo and Cass were making their way to the ring, Enzo got taken out. Cass got abducted over the barricade. <laughs> yeah, did. He disappeared over the fucking barricade. Enzo got the magic killer on the outside. Seth came down, tried to fight off the club. And then Joe got involved, and then Cass came back, and Kurt's like, okay, this isn't going to be a handicap match. Enzo can't continue, but I've got you guys another partner. Ended up being Finn Balor. Yes, because not not on the volition that Finn Balor is over AF, can he get a spot on Monday Night Raw? No, we have to actually have to like wedge ways for him to be on TV. Here's the thing. No, I'll, 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 hit, I'll hit more on that when we get to our, our, our main event, because that's the other weird bit. But Seth, Cass, and Finn ended up beating Samoa Joe in the club. Go a figure. And Gallows Anderson in a shake weight. <laughs> Samoa Joe in a shake weight? Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> Just keep going. Uh, Anderson Post in the comments if you get it. Anderson ended up losing to the uh, the new lackluster finisher from Seth Rollins. The uh, Rainmaker knee lift. Spinning. I'm going to spin you around and then knee you in the face. Yeah. It's not It's not that cool. Especially yeah. after you're stealing everybody else's moves throughout the rest of the match. To try to be Finn Balor, you try to be AJ Styles, and then he didn't want to be Triple H. 
Uh, no, I think he should have just stuck it to Triple H even more by keeping the finisher. And then Triple H has the entire rest of the year to come up with a new finisher before he fights somebody else at WrestleMania. <laughs> Triple H come up with a new finisher. You're funny. He just used the figure four leg lock. Yeah, probably. Uh, we had... And a super kick. <laughs> we had an in-ring segment with uh, Alexa Bliss. Uh, Alexa Bliss talking about how she's going to take the women's title from Bailey. Yeah, because Bailey and unicorns and rainbows and happy dreams and yay. And, ba- and Bailey came out and be like, hey. Bailey's like, everyone says all of this. Shut up. And so Alexa kept saying the stuff. And then Sasha's like, hey, don't say that stuff to Bailey. And, and then, Corey Graves is like, Sasha Banks is a light whore. Essentially. Uh, this ended up turning... Essentially. Okay. Uh, this ended up turning into a singles match between Sasha Banks and Alexa Bliss, where Sasha Banks won by count out because Alexa's like, I don't really need to be here. Yeah. And it took until Alexa Bliss backed all the way up the ramp before Bailey decided to actually, like, try and you know, grab. I heard her put the, the headset down because she was a commentary the whole time. I heard her put it down. I was like, she's going to grab Alexa and go toss her back in the ring. Because that happens a lot. And, you know. I can't, I can't say that wouldn't have caused a disqualification, but it doesn't usually dis- cause a disqualification. No, not normally. And that would have been like a good like, hey, you know, stick it into Alexa Bliss, like toss her back in, let Sasha finish her off, give Sasha a little bit more momentum, yep. you know, into whatever she's planning on doing post this match. But yeah, uh, okay, we'll do it afterwards. So Bailey grabs Alexa from behind, starts running her to the uh, towards the ring. And Alexa says, "Nope." Alexa escapes. Uh, Bailey right on her, <laughs> he- actually <laughs> on her heels. Bailey is taller than Alexa and can cover a lot more ground than Alexa can. Uh, but Alexa somehow made it to the back first, uh, and then Bailey's like, "Eh, let's go to the ring and celebrate with Sasha." And then Alexa's like, "Bitch, I'm actually still behind you." <laughs> and then it hits Bailey. Bailey falls down. Then Sasha starts running up the ramp. And Alexa's Alexa's like, nope, I'm out again. (laughs) Yeah, that was the thing. Um, Yeah, we had uh, Apollo Crews defeated Kurt Hawkins with the cruise missile. Yeah, another graduate from the Kurt Hawkins Star Factory. Yeah, sure, we'll say that. That was where Titus O'Neil came out, and there's a weird selfie. Gross. Uh, If you want to venture over to Titus O'Neil's Twitter. Look Uh, at Apollo Crews' face. You can tell he's... He's very uncomfortable. And then we had the Marine 5 interview where uh, Miz tried to get uh, either Heath Slater or Curtis Axel. Yeah, which literally had nothing to do with the Marine 5. The best part of this entire thing was Maurice knocking Rhino's crackers out of his But if we have a still frame, God, can I we hope get this Rhino facial I expression? I this... Closer. <laughs> Closer. You can't make directions if it's not there. I know. It's I'm going to really do it regardless. Can't find it. Rhino's face in this segment was so hilarious. So much. Oh, my God. I, Rhino and the Crackers is the best thing out of his and Heath Slater's tag team. At first, it was, I got seven, I got 12, I got 43 kids. Now, it's Rhino and it's Crackers. What are you talking about? It's the above ground pool, man. He got he got his pool. Now the focus is on the crackers. Uh, but yeah, the cheese whiz. We had that, uh, and then we had Ambrose unmade, and then made the list again. Uh, he did a little bargaining with Chris Jericho, and then he slapped Chris Jericho on the back a few too many times, and Jericho put him back on the list. Uh, then we had Austin Aries telling Kurt that he had an idea for the main event of Two Hundred Five Live, which we don't really know what that is yet. So we've actually got a little bit of, like, mystery as to what's going to happen on 205 Live tomorrow. This is literally the first time I think they've ever acknowledged that the Raw general manager is in charge of 205 Live. Yeah, it's a fourth hour of Raw, essentially. Just after Because the Smackdown. cruiserweights are on Raw. Yeah. You know, the, the Raw's cruiserweight division. And this is the first time I think they've actually acknowledged that the person in charge of 205 Live is the same person as the person who's in charge of Monday Night Raw. Yeah. By having a cruiserweight talking to Kurt Angle. Yeah. So Austin Aries has some plan for tomorrow. We do know that Neville is going to go against Jack Gallagher on the show, but I don't know if that's the main event or not. 
Um, Main event's probably another match between Austin Aries and TJ Perkins. God, I hope not. Um, then this was also where we saw Miz uh, telling Kurt Angle, hey, I found I found my partner, blah, blah, blah. And then Elias Samson walked back. <laughs> walked by and he, Kurt's like, good choice. <laughs> it's not him. I don't even know who that is. Well, was like, good luck. It's not him. You're going to need the good luck, Miz. It, it, it's not him. It, no, no, I, no, I don't. You're going to need it. No, I won't. You're going to need it. Just <laughs> yelling back and forth. Okay, so then we go to the main event where Miz introduces his tag team partner and they don't show up. Dean Ambrose was really excited to find out who the partner was going to be, too. <laughs> he, was, he was ready, but there was no one there. And then Miz tried to leave, and Kurt's like, No, I told you you had till the end of the night to find a tag team partner. You didn't. You have a match, and it starts now. So Miz was in a handicap match for the better part of like five or six minutes. And then it wasn't until Dean Ambrose was about to put him through a table that... Bray Wyatt was the... A wild Bray Wyatt appeared. Now, back to what you were saying about Finn Balor. We have Finn Balor, who is one of the most over guys on the roster. We have Bray Wyatt, who is a championship contender. The two of which are part of a feud, essentially, because Bray kind of, like, poked at the idea of, hey, I'm going to be watching you, Finn... But we had to, like, shoehorn them into random tag team matches? Yeah. The Raw before a pay-per-view? The fuck? And Finn's thing at Payback is he's going to be on a pre-show Miz TV? Yep. What the fuck? This makes no sense. Yep. And from this point on, Bray Wyatt shows up and the match just isn't a thing anymore. Yeah, no, I I think I kind of figured out something that might happen. Okay. Is in case they need a referee segment for the House of Horrors, I think when Bray Wyatt warped in, I think he stole the referee. I mean, essentially, I know they explained on Raw that the House of Horrors match will end in the ring. Right. But I think they might have a referee there in, like, uh... Maybe the match can actually end at the House of Horrors place, you know? Somebody might need to count pins or ask if somebody wants to give up. Mm. So I think Bray Wyatt stole the referee, and that's why the referee just disappeared. I don't know. This... It's, it, WWE, WWE's got this weird habit of disappearing referees, and when, like, second, yeah. when matches, like, when matches break down and become no, no contests... The referees don't even say anything. They just get the hell out of Dodge. Yeah. Another thing we learned in, toward, towards the end of this match is that LED stage, the wiggly wall. Yeah. Because Bray did the Sister Abigail to Dean Ambrose into it, and it moved a lot. I expected it to go, and instead it just went, thump. <laughs> it did the worm. Scotty Too Hotty is the LED board. Uh, yeah, I did hear it works for the company again. Well, you thought he was a trainer at the Performance Center. Nope, he's the LED board. Uh, yeah. Raw, Raw started strong and then just, like, unraveled. <laughs> it progressively made less and less sense as the night went on. Pretty much. But it's, it was still kind of fun, though. Yeah. It was... No, the, the, the saving grace to this Monday Night Raw is that there were a lot of, like, funny segments... It was, yeah, it was a, it was a very it was a, it was a very comical raw. The matches weren't amazing, but the entertainment yeah. value was still there. So, yeah. I mean, SmackDown doesn't really need to sell us on Payback because their only superstar that's at Payback is going to be fucking Randy Orton. So, well, and sort of Kevin Owens. Oh, yeah, okay, Kevin Owens, too. Which, I mean, my guess is they'll both probably have short promos. Talking about their matches. They might even face each other. What? 
They might do a champion versus champion. Owens match. is going to shoot for a pop up power bomb, and then Orton's going to wiggle around in the air and RKO. But that's going to be the finish. Maybe I don't know. We'll find out. I'm calling I'll... it now. If that's what happens, pop right. up into the RKO. I'll I'll give you the credit if if that's what happens. I'll give you the credit for coming on it. Yeah. But that's it for Raw, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Why don't you do that every time? That was, I don't know. That was actually quite pleasant. Thank oh, you for that. You're welcome. Uh, click the links. Check out the podcast. Also, check out Reasonable Wrestling Fans. That's Reasonable the W. Like, like wrestling, wrestling, where we are posting brand new videos every single week. We got a brand new Fantasy Warfare and another Hocktail Hour coming out this week. Be sure to look forward to that. Stay over what? here on this channel, though, because after... Uh, Tuesday, once we know whatever's happened with Randy Orton and Kevin Owens, we'll be shooting our uh, prediction video for this Sunday's Payback. Yeah! So, uh, that'll be popping up this weekend. Payback purview. Yeah, what he said. Um, and actually, next week we'll be doing a, a top five, which you only get in video form. You don't get those in podcast form. Nope. So be sure to stay on the YouTubes. Uh, yeah. Let us know. It's my turn for five people. Yeah. Let us know what other types of videos you want to see over on Reasonable Wrestling Fans. Contact yeah. us here or over there. Uh, yeah. I think, actually, at the end Hell of this, yeah. you're, you'll get links to all the, like, yeah. the next videos and stuff like that. Because we're going to like start revamping these videos a little bit. So. Are you? Hell yeah. Are you hell to Craig? Yeah. Okay. Um, where, where, I just, okay. Uh, this outro, the boxes things this the outro is evolving just like Raw did. Yep. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you at whatever video you do. Uh, fuck Titus O'Neil and your weird ass selfies. Yeah, fuck Titus Weird ass selfies. Goddamn post.